Cable versus Fiber. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior, where we make videos to help seniors understand the most cost-effective internet solution. So today I want to look at Cable versus Fiber. This past month, after 30 years of being a cable subscriber, I switched to Fiber. Let me explain why I did. If you do like this video, we'd sure appreciate that like and subscribe. Everybody at Tech for Senior is a volunteer and it would really help the channel. Thanks so much. Let's get on with the difference between cable and fiber and which one you should choose. Now it's important for you to realize that the transmission lines or the large lines on the telephone poles that move data are all fiber optic. So the only difference between fiber optic cable and fiber optic in your home is the distance between the telephone pole and your home. So on a cable service, you'll have, yes, you have this cable piece that goes from the telephone pole to your home, and this connects to a cable modem. On a fiber optic system, you have the fiber optic line coming from the telephone pole to your home and then hooking to a fiber optic modem. So you, I'm sure, understand that the two systems are quite different though, because fiber optic runs on light, whereas cable runs on power, juice. You know, it goes through copper, copper coil, copper wires. Now let's look at cable first. Cable is probably a little more prevalent than fiber optic services. But of course, as we've discussed in the United States and Canada, particularly in the US, it's dying quickly. Now let's look at how cable works so you have a good understanding of the limitations. So let's look at how the data flows on cable to your cable modem. Of course, it comes across the transmission lines, down through cable into your house and attaches to your cable modem. In order for your computer to understand the data, it has to have some software and we call this software DOCSIS. Now the version of DOCSIS that you have in your cable modem probably is DOCSIS 3 or 3.1. You can't update your cable modem as it is a chip in that box. So as we are moving now to DOCSIS 4, your internet service providers, your cable companies will be upgrading those modems to the DOCSIS 4.0 which should give you a bit better speed. Now, when we talk about cable speed, what we're talking about is asymmetry. In other words, the download speed is not equal to the upload speed. For example, if you have a one gigabit cable connection, the download speed will be one gigabit, but the upload speed will be about 100 megabits, depending on how the service is organized. Isn't that odd? Like, why can't it be the same? And the answer to that is DOCSIS. Because when this was created many, many years ago, things were a lot different on the internet. You know how when we go to a website and we say, hey, we want to see that website, then the website downloads that information on our computer. The upload is a tiny little request. Most of the stuff that we do is downloading. Well, this all changed uh, many, about four or five years ago with broadcasting on internet. Uh, we all do this now and we have a lot of communication skills that we use. And this all has made uploading more important. This has been a big challenge for, of course, cable because we want to increase that upload speed. Now let's look at fiber optic cable. Well, fiber optic cable, of course, is on the telephone line. And as it moves from the telephone line to your house, it will go by a fiber optic cable, not by coaxial cable. Now, if you look at this diagram, you'll see the street that I live on. Well, I'm very fortunate because the fiber optic cable comes down the left side of the street, which is the side of the street my house is on. That is great. And if you look at the box here, you'll see that it is a service outlet that has actually the fiber company and the cable company sharing that box. Now, in the newer subdivisions that these are separate boxes, but in mine, it is there. 
Now, if you look down the side of my lawn, you'll see this is where I've placed underground conduit. About 20 years ago, when we recabled my area, I actually put one and a half inch conduit down that side of my house, and you'll see it comes over uh, under the sidewalk uh, onto the side of the house, and that's uh, there is an underground about an inch and a half diameter uh, PVC pipe. This made it real easy for them to run the fiber optic cable from the service box out there uh, into my house. And then it is an easy run because the studio is just above the box on the outside of the house. So it was easy to connect. So if you look at the outside of my house, you'll see that I have the old POTS line, the fiber line, and the cable line. So I can switch back and forth between fiber and cable as I want. Now I have to tell you that the main reason that I switched from cable to fiber was cost. I saved $1,800 uh, in the year by shopping around and negotiating a better deal with the fiber optic company. And I would encourage you to really have a good look at this. But in the United States, you really want to look at 5G home internet service because that's where you're going to get the best deal. I didn't really have that option in Canada, but I had a really great deal with the fiber company and was able to get uh, to save quite a bit of money. And that's primarily why I made the change. But what you have to remember is the limitation on cable. Now, uh, the maximum that our cable services are providing at present is 1.5 gigabits of download speed. Now that may get a little bit better as, as time goes on and maybe new versions of DOCSIS come out. But on our fiber system, I can order up one gigabit, two gigabits, four gigabits, or eight gigabits on the fiber service that I have. It's my own connection and it and allows me great flexibility and a lot of increasing speed if I want. So let's just review the fiber connection speed. I now have symmetrical, yes, fiber is symmetrical. There's one gig down and one gig up. Now let's look at the equipment that they use to install. In this diagram, you'll see, of course, that this is the fiber modem, different than our cable modem. Then you'll see to the right of that are two pieces of equipment. There's the flat piece, which of course is the router that they connected to the modem. And this router has about uh, 10 high-speed ports on it, so I was able to get rid of my old switch. Now, the cylindrical thing on top is actually a 5G three-band mesh router. This is a separate piece that connects on, and this uh, offers the uh, a, a mesh router system for my house because I have a second floor and we were concerned about would there be enough broadcasting power on the second floor. And in this diagram, you'll see the, uh, the other mesh access upstairs and this broadcasts out on the upper floor. Now my home phone was, uh, is connected actually to the bottom router. There's a phone port in there that I just plug my home phone in and uh, that I had them the uh, the phone number simply ported over at no charge and in fact the home phone is included in the in the package deal I have. So the installation went in two parts. There was of course the first crew that came and they connected the outside uh, uh, outside connections. They were really happy because I gave them an easy access through the uh, through the PVC pipe, and I had even left a pull line through there, and they were easily able to get the um, get the fiber from the service connection along the uh, along my property, and then under the um, sidewalk into the side of my house. There was then a second man came. He's a very interesting fella. He was the guy I joke with you. I said I wanted to help him. He said that's extra. <laughs> anyway, he uh, he was from India. He had a bunch of degrees. He was a very sharp individual and able to uh, connect. He did the inside inside connection to the house and set it all up. So what are my feelings after using it for about a month? Well, 
I would say that it is much faster than cable. That increased upload speed really does make a difference, and I'm pretty happy with that. Other than that, I really don't notice a lot of difference. All my software works the same. The phone works the same. Um, the only thing is, of course, I don't have to pay as much money as I did when I paid for cable services. You know, we live in incredible times. If you think of the technological revolution that we are living through right now, I guess, you know, we read as, as young students about the industrial revolution that took place in Europe over a hundred years. Think of the technology revolution that we're going through and we're actually living in it and it's taking a very short time. The first, of course, was the discovery or the creation of the internet. That certainly changed our lives. This, the second came along was, of course, the cell phone, another marvel of technology, which you really can't live without. But the third thing that's happening now that you will all experience, of course, is this artificial intelligence. We're always talking lots about it. We're doing lots of shows about it. And this is really going to change our lives. The problem is we just don't have that. I've got to have an application, that one application that would make things so much different. And I think that's going to come, but that is, of course, going to need more horsepower and more computing power. And that's why I think that because you have the opportunity of having much higher speeds on fiber, I think this is where you should be looking if, in fact, you can't get 5G technology. So I'm Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. I want to thank you so much for watching. So hopefully this will help if you're making trying to make a decision on whether to purchase cable or fiber. Please do that like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.